It's about time. It's about that time. I discuss Tori Amos, an artist that I have not really ever discussed on this channel before. And it is safe to say that I have been doing her a little bit dirty. I've always been a fan of her, but I, I, I stopped listening to her for many years. I have some CDs of hers somewhere. Her first couple of albums, they're all put away in a box somewhere. But it's been absolute years since I listened to some Tori Amos. But thankfully, this was Patreon were requested, a Patreon requested classic review. And if you want to get in on that, if you want to get in on the action of requesting videos on this channel that you want to see me do, please look at the Patreon and consider supporting me. It would be amazing. And you get your own say, you get your own ideas thrown into the mix and I can make them happen on this channel. So thank you to the Patreon request for making this video happen. And I'm so glad it did. It's reignited my love for Tori Amos. Little Earthquakes is the album we're talking about today, a debut album from Tori and a 90s classic for sure. A 90s alt girl classic. She was definitely up there with the best of the alt piano pop girls. You know who they were at the time, not even necessarily piano pop, but if we're just talking like alt girls, that really ran the 90s. You've got your Alanis Morissettes, you've got your Tori Amoses, and many others as well. And Tori was up there with the best, but she was up there with the best, making tracks like Crucify, which is an absolutely stellar song with an unbelievably dramatic delivery from Tori. She sounds really fired up and almost got this like ferocious feel to her voice too. Speaking of other alt girls from the 90s, it's got a bit of a Fiona Apple feel to it actually. And not the Fiona Apple I'm necessarily referencing in regards to saying 90s, but something more like of a modern Fiona Apple. This reminds me of something that you'd find on Fetch the Bolt Cutters, you know? That kind of idea of being trapped within yourself and not being able to escape you know, that, that oppression that is within you that's just so hard to re remove. And that is just very much indicative of some modern Fiona Apple. And I feel like this track also has that too, where she's talking about her heart being wrapped in chains and you're crucifying yourself. It's got that same feel to it. Except, of course, this is coming from a much younger artist of the time, though, by the way. I mean, Fiona these days is much more wiser, has a different outlook on life. But Tori, at this point, was quite a young artist making songs like this. And it's impressive, to be fair. These lyrics are really, really heavy and deep throughout the whole album. You've got tracks that touch on feminist ideas as well. You've got tracks like Mother that touches on the dynamic, d dynamic, dynamic between um, the mother and daughter relationship. But it's not just always about that, particularly within the song, because even Mother could be, you know, uh, an allegory or a, a metaphor for like Mother Earth and how she has this relationship with the world, the planet, and how, uh, you know, some patriarchal ideas kind of hold her back and tend to hold women back. I know it's very buzzwordy to say those kinds of things, but when an artist has such a, an insight into these topics, you kind of have to admire their attempts to talk about something in such an interesting way, because it's so easy to come across as preachy or to come across as really basic and just say buzzwords and you know men are all bad you know that kind of shit that's not interesting at all but the way she kind of takes a deeper look into it and brings out some really interesting ideas is what makes her so special i think girl is another good track for that as well sit in the chair and be good now and become what they all told you to become is one of the lines I'm paraphrasing a little bit but yeah an interesting line as well this kind of idea of what women are supposed to be and she really hammers that in in quite a few of these tracks with these lyrics and again it's done in an interesting way paired with the fact that the intro to this track with her vocals she sounds so much like Kate Bush on this one she I, I would say Kate Bush lives within this album throughout to be honest I, I don't think it's harsh to say or unfair to say that Tori Amos is an, an, an admirer of Kate I mean, who isn't really? Kate lives amongst all kinds of artists. And this Classics Week, actually, I've mentioned Kate Bush twice in two reviews now. Jesus Christ, you can't escape Kate. But the way it develops into that really like 
90s alt rock section. It sounds so good. And it sounds like it's quite modern as well. I feel like other artists of this time would have just kind of stuck to trends and uh, the ideas would become quite dated. But no, this album goes for it. And yes, it sounds of its time, but it's not in your face and it's not a dated sound at all. It still sounds great. In terms of instrumental though, like, you know, an instrumental portion of the album, the best moment on the whole thing has got to be Precious Things, where the instrumental intensifies towards the end. And the drums, my friend, the drums. Oh my God, you know when I hear some good drums, I always go, the drums, my friend. That is the, the indicator of you knowing as a viewer that the drums are so good. This whole track is excellent, but my God, the ending. Oh, I love that so much. She could have done this more on the whole album and I would not have minded what a one minute, one, 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 one iota, one, one, I would have minded. There are other little moments on the album too where she just does these extra things that make the songs stand out and make them very individual. Uh, track like Winter, where her vocal tone really shifts quite drastically on the chorus. And it's just so effective. Like she uses her voice in such a great way. She has an excellent voice, but a lot of singers out there, and there's a lot of them who have an excellent voice, just show you how excellent their voice is and they don't do anything else. There's no dynamics. It's just really pitch perfect on every note. You know, uh, you know the kind of arts I'm talking about. They will probably be a contestant on Britain's Got Talent or The X Factor. They'll get to the final. The judges will be like, your voice is amazing. And it's like, yes, it is. But they only do one thing with it. But I love artists like Tori Amos who bring you the dynamics. She shifts at the right times. She intensifies her voice at the right times. She softens her voice at the right times. And the entire track has so many layers to it that it just keeps you interested the whole way through. That's what a great singer should do with their voice. But that slight tweak in her voice on Winter in the Chorus just really brings you in and listens to it, how she softens it. And it just is so important that she does that because it really shifts the tone and suddenly you're really you know uh, sort of like leaning in to listening to what she's saying as if she's there talking to you and you know this idea that she throws out there of you know uh, you know when you're going to change your mind to this person and you know she loves them more than they love her it just makes the lyrics way more impactful than they would have been if she just kept her voice the same. It's very, very good, very smart. Silent All These Years is very powerful as well in terms of her vocal delivery. Uh, really, really impactful vocals here. So, <laughs> the, <laughs> there's one line that I laugh at every time where she says, so you found a girl who thinks really deep thoughts, but what's amazing about really deep thoughts? The way she says it as well, that's so deadpan. I just find it so funny and it's so accidentally Kanye. Like Kanye West would definitely say something like this, particularly on a song like Bound 2. And this is way before Kanye even started making music. But when I hear it, I just find it so funny. It's one of those things that I'm not even sure is meant to be that funny. It probably isn't even that funny, but just hearing it out loud just cracks me up a little bit. I've got to highlight Happy Phantom as a standout too. The way this track is so upbeat and uplifting and the instrumental is so different to everything else on the album. That's the thing with this album. <clears throat> what she brings to the table is so dynamic. Like it's not the same song over and over again. And I think that's gotta be highlighted as an impressive thing for an album like this. It's so easy to slip into very similar sounding songs. A lot of artists, again, who have a voice as good as this or make songs that are kind of like built around a piano um, can often just kind of slip into habits and every song kind of ends up sounding very similar. You get the same thing from one song, you would another, but you can't say that about Little Earthquakes at all. I mean, this track right here is nothing like Crucify. Crucify is nothing like Precious Things. Precious Things is nothing like uh, mother, uh, leather, they're all just so different and the cohesion is still there. This album is very cohesive. And I love Happy Phantom for what it is. It is just such a bright song and the melody is so great. Um, but on the flip side, you know, you get tracks like Me and a Gun, which is could which couldn't be further from the description I just used for Happy Phantom. An incredibly horrific song. You, you kind of have to say it as it is. This is a horrific song detailing quite 
vividly at times um, about a rape and how she was raped. And good, good God. I mean, without going into too much detail, because I know topics like this can be a bit much for people. But wow, the, the detail she goes into and uh, the, the, the power of the song as well. This is, this is a really clever tool that she uses here as well. You know, she strips everything away. And this is what I mean with the album just kind of going for something different on every song. When she hits such a, 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 a you know, a, a disgusting sort of topic that is so traumatic and has harmed her so much, you know, she shifts things and changes how it is. And it's just her voice. It's just an a cappella song. And the impact it has is remarkable. It is a lot to, to sit through and I, I'm not going to, you know, recommend this one for you know, the faint hearted, I guess you could say, uh, but God, oof, it is, it is, it is a lot. And, uh, the, the way she handles it too. I mean, it's always super impressive when an artist is able to talk on such traumatic events in a song and write it in the way that they can. Um, you know, that in itself is an achievement, but yeah, it's a really, really brilliant track that is hard to sit through. And yeah, that is Tori Amos. I mean, obviously there's other tracks on this album too. The final track I think is fantastic as well. Really great closer to what is such a stellar album and such a memorable album too. I mean, you're getting so many layers of lyrics, so many layers of vocal dynamics, instrumentals change a lot too. Even slower tracks like China are pretty nice on the ears as well. But you know, there's, there's just so much, there's just so much to praise. And uh, Tori Amos is, is an artist that gets appreciated. She's, she's you know, considered a good artist, but probably deserves more than she gets, actually. You can even see her influence in other modern artists, too. In fact, that final track, I was getting some Regina from it. I would not be at all surprised if Regina, you know, was, was listening to a lot of Tori during her younger years and influenced her entire career because you can see that the that the similarities are uncanny so yeah tori amos brilliant artist and definitely worthy of a classic review and i want to binge through the rest of her albums as much as i can now because i think i need to check out everything she's done because i've only heard a few of them and this album is stellar so thank you for watching this classic review hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you agree with what i say let me know your thoughts in the comments if you have heard it if you haven't check it out then come back let me know have a good day, subscribe if you haven't already, and goodbye.